Okay. As Brisbane comes to grips with the flooding uh, that has invaded so many of our suburbs, uh, we are still on a very high alert in parts of regional Queensland. I mentioned this morning that we were keeping a very careful watch on Gundawindi. The latest hydrology modelling indicates that Gundawindi is heading for a record flood of at least 10.85 metres, but in fact is very possibly going to be higher. Uh, with a levee bank of 11 metres, uh, we are now very concerned and watching very carefully. There is a point upstream from uh, Gundawindi called Kildonan. We will be able at about 4 o'clock to get a reading at Kildonan that will indicate whether or not we believe uh, we may have to start taking preemptive measures to secure the safety of uh, people at the hospital, the aged care homes and potentially some evacuations. Uh, the road uh, into Gundawindi is open, so if we, uh, do, if we are faced with this uh, prospect, uh, we at least have road access. Uh, if uh, the Kildonan reading at four o'clock will indicate uh, just how big this may be in Gundawindi, this is a town of 6,000 people, we will have a six-hour window of opportunity before the waters make their way from Kildonan into Gundawindi later tonight. So we have a situation uh, potentially developing in Gundawindi. As I said, we have uh, people furiously monitoring the water and trying to get an assessment. We already know it is going to be a record water level in Gundawindi. The question now is whether that record will go over the edge of the levee bank. And if that happens, then we will, if we have any prospect and any belief that that will happen, uh, then at four o'clock we will make a decision uh, on how we will uh, secure the safety of the people in Gundawindi. The second issue that we are managing this afternoon uh, is that in the Lockyer Valley, due to serious damage to much of the water treatment infrastructure in the valley, we now have uh, a number of reservoirs uh, running very low on water. This, uh, there are a number of uh, reservoirs, I think four reservoirs that, uh, sorry, there are a number of reservoirs that service the townships of the Lockyer Valley uh, and they provide drinking water to about 10,000 people. As I said, they are now running extremely low. Uh, a, a very large exercise began this afternoon uh, where we have uh, five Australian Defence Force water trucks uh, out of Brisbane and six to eight from the Townsville Council around 6pm tonight will start making their way down into the valley. Uh, so some uh, 13 water trucks will now start making uh, runs of water to, to top up directly into those reservoirs and they will run 24 hours a day until such time as we have been able to repair sufficient infrastructure in the water treatment facilities that feed those reservoirs in the Lockyer Valley. Uh, there are many small townships in the Lockyer Valley, but in total there are some 10,000 people. Water supply is now a critical issue. Can I reassure the people of that valley uh, that there has been a massive logistical exercise pulled together this afternoon and water trucks from both Toowoomba and Brisbane, including those uh, provided by the ADF, are now making their way into the valley and they will continue to operate, as I said, 24 hours a day until we can fix the infrastructure that will get water treated and back into the reservoirs. In terms of electricity supply, uh, we have seen the customers who have cut off uh, drop uh, at the very highest point. That we had 125,000 people uh, cut off from electricity uh, in the southeast. The customers that are offline right now are 103,000. The aim by 10 o'clock tonight is to reduce that to 70,000, and by tomorrow night at 10 p.m. to have less than 30,000. The rate of reconnection will then slow considerably after that. Those ones after 10 o'clock tomorrow night are the ones where we've got serious uh, and prolonged inundation and they are in suburbs which we may not be able to re reconnect for some time. So by 10 o'clock tomorrow night we hope to have reduced the number of people uh, who have been without power as a result of this incident uh, by uh, close to 100,000. So most people in the next 24 hours should see their suburbs reconnected. For those who don't, it means you're in a suburb and you'll know this already, which has very serious inundation and uh, it's going to be a long time before we've got all of those issues resolved. Uh, we have uh, some reports also out of the Lockyer Valley in relation to the search and rescue teams. We have not uh, found any further, uh, we haven't identified any further deaths, but I'll invite uh, Deputy Commissioner to make some comments about that exercise. 
Premier, thank you. Um, um, probably the one uh, bit of good news we've had out of the uh, lock here today is that the clearance of, of the uh, rail bridge at Grantham has been now completed. All of the vehicles have been removed and we've had police divers check the remaining water hole uh, under the bridge. Um, I'm happy to say that no uh, further deceased persons were located as a result of this search. So that is very, very good news at this time. Obviously, the search and rescue efforts do continue. Um, and if there's one thing I could ask you to do to pass on to uh, the community, if you have reported a friend or relative uh, missing and you have identified that that person is safe somewhere, would you please kindly uh, ring the same uh, authority that you registered that person with as a missing person and advise them of that fact? Um, we are using enormous resources trying to track down um, people who are registered on those lists. Thank you. Any questions? Are there any questions? Premier, I know authorities are providing an update on the situation in Grantham at the moment. Do you have any information, any new information on what's going on there? Uh, that was Grantham. That apart, from, apart from the, the situation with the, the bridge? I, I, Premier, if I may, uh, look, certainly, I mean, the search and rescue aspect is, is occurring right across that whole valley area. We have large numbers of uh, police, SES and ADF personnel now in that area right now uh, continuing to search. Um, it, is a, it has to be a methodical search that is undertaken of all of the farmhouses, of all of the creek banks that exist right through that whole locker system. Uh, this is going to take some time. Uh, obviously, we're prioritising and the Grantham Bridge, um, the rail bridge uh, and the area underneath that was a priority because of the... Um, because of the uh, reports that we had about the number of vehicles and potentially people caught in those vehicles. And that's why I said I'm very happy to report that we've had no uh, deceased persons located um, in, that, in that area. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. General. I just wonder if there's any prognosis about the developing offshore river then. This is uh, in the Coral Sea. Uh, uh, I'm happy yeah, to answer yeah. that. Certainly, we've had a, a weather report on that this afternoon. Um, they have told us that there is, a, there is actually a tropical cyclone um, and a tropical low in the Coral Sea area, um, but there is a number of days before that would uh, impact on our coastline other than gale warnings in uh, the north and, the, and then ultimately in the south of the, uh, of the state. Do we know any more about the latest victim who was found in the Mile Creek in Dolby? Um, I can only report that it's a male person um, and he was found in a motor vehicle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.